Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer on this Friday, May 7th. Today we shall be continuing our series on Revelation. We uh, had a short little break yesterday and the day before, and you can view the last couple chapters that have been read um, on the YouTube page before here. Today we shall be doing the Office of the Readings with some reflection and a closing prayer. So, let us begin. Our first reading is from the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter. I, John, saw another angel coming down from heaven. His authority was so great that all the earth was lighted up by his glory. He cried out in a strong voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, She is a cage for every unclean spirit, a cage for every filthy and disgusting bird. For she has made all the nations drink the poisoned wine of her lewdness. The kings of the earth committed fornication with her. The world's merchants grew rich from her wealth and wantonness. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Depart from her, my people, for fear of sinning with her and sharing the plagues infected on her. For her sins have piled up as high as heaven, and God keeps count of her crimes. Pay her back as she had paid others. Pay her double for her deeds. Pour into her cup twice the amount she concocted. In proportion to her boasting and sensuality, repay her in torment and grief. For she said to herself, I sit enthroned as a queen, no widow am I. And never will I go into mourning. Therefore her plagues will come all at once. Death and mourning and famine. She shall be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who condemns her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication with her. And walled in her sensuality. Will weep and lament over her. When they see the smoke arise as she burns. They will keep their distance for fear of the punishment inflicted on her. And will say, Alas, alas, great city that you are, Babylon the mighty, in a single hour your doom has come. The merchants of the world will weep and mourn over her too. For there will be no more market for their imports, their cargoes of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple garments, silk and scarlet cloth, fragrant uh, fragrant wood of every kind, all sorts of ivory pieces and expensive wooden furniture, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, amamum, perfumes, myrrh, and frankincense, wine and olive oil, fine flour and grain, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, slaves and human lives. The fruit your appetite craved has deserted you. All your luxury, luxury and splendor are gone. You shall never find them again. The merchants who deal in these goods, who grew rich from business with the city, will keep their distance for fear of the punishment inflicted on her. Weeping and mourning, they cry out, Alas, alas, a great city, dressed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, adorned all in gold and in jewels and pearls. In a single hour, this great wealth has been destroyed. Every captain and navigator, all sailors, sailors and seafaring men, Then stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke go up to the city and burn to the ground. What city could have compared with this great one? They poured dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and mourning, Alas, alas, a great city, in which all ship owners grew rich from their profitable trade with her. In a single hour her destruction has come. Rejoice over her, you heavens, you saints, apostles, and prophets, For God has exacted punishment from her on your account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a reading from the commentary on the letter to the Romans by St. Cyril of Alexandria. Though many we are one body, and members one of another, united by Christ in the bonds of love. Christ has made Jews and Gentiles, one by breaking down the barrier that divided us and abolishing the law within its precepts and decrees. This is why we should all be of one mind, and if if one member suffers some misfortune, all should suffer with him. If one member is honored, all should be glad. 
Paul says, Accept one another as Christ accepted you for the glory of God. Now, accepting one another means being willing to share one another's thoughts and feelings, bearing one another's burdens, and preserving the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This is how God accepted us in Christ. For John's testimony is true, and he said that God the Father loved the world so much that he gave his own Son for us. God's Son was given as a ransom for the lives of us all. He has delivered us from death, redeemed us from death and from sin. Paul throws light on the purpose of God's plan when he says that Christ became the servant of the circumcised to show God's fidelity. God had promised the Jewish patriarchs that he would bless their offspring and make it as numerous as the stars of heaven. This is why the divine word himself, who as God, holds all creation in being and is the source of its well-being, appeared in the flesh and became man. He became into this world in human flesh, not to be served, but as himself said, to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Christ declared that his coming in visible form was to fulfill the promise made to Israel. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he said. Paul was perfectly correct then in saying that Christ became a servant of the circumcised in order to fulfill the promise made to the patriarchs and that God the Father had charged him with this task. It was also with the task of bringing salvation to the Gentiles, so that they too might praise their Savior and Redeemer as the Creator of the universe. In this way, God's mercy has been extended to all men, including the Gentiles, and it can be seen that the mystery of the divine wisdom contained in Christ has not failed in its benevolent purpose. In the place of those who fell away, the whole world has been saved. Let us pray. Father, may we whom you renew in baptism bear witness to our faith by the way we live. By the suffering death and resurrection of your Son, may we come to eternal joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and direct our days and our time in peace. Amen. We wish you all a blessed day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for morning prayer. Have a great day, everyone.